welcome back to the epic storm i am bryant cook and tonight i am joined by alex mckinley what's up alex hey everyone uh, i'm doing pretty well how about you bryant not too bad well alex tonight we are playing a donation deck from our regular contributor andre thank you andre for another sweet sweet legacy deck this is esper citadel storm and the reason i brought alex on is alex what deck does this sort of look like it's got a lot of things that would remind you of uh, the Epic Storm. You got these cantrips, you have the six protection slots that are the same, you have a lot of the same artifact setups, the lands are very similar to the four color list. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so when you look at the like the bones of this deck, it's very similar to the Epic Storm. Alex mentioned the cantrips and the protection spells, but we have Mox Opal, Lion's Eye Diamond, Wishclaw, Talisman, Echo of Aeons. The big notable difference here is the lack of Ad Nauseam. Instead, we have Blossom Citadel, powered by none other than Transmute Artifact, uh, Antiquity Staple. Uh, and then in Aetherflux Reservoir is our way of beating Veil of Summer while working with Transmute Artifact, which I think is kind of cute. Yeah, there's not a synergy between Transmute Artifact and Wishclaw Talisman, correct? It's an artifact, yeah. You can go get it. Yeah, but you can't like activate the Wishclaw Talisman and transmute it or cast transmute and then activate talisman and sack it i don't believe that those work no transmute artifact is the sorcery so that would not work uh but yeah. you if you wanted to in a wild wild world you could transmute for wishclaw to get like orem's chant or echo of aeon something like that mm -hmm. uh that said yeah. if you're transmuting for chant you could probably get defense grid i don't know So, yeah, that's going to be an interesting card to play with, because that, that replaces essentially the Burning Wish slot in this deck. Exactly. Um, I The one notable thing for me here, Alex, is the lack of Rite of Flame, and I'm not sure what slot... Oh, it became Grim Monolith. That's what happened. So this deck is essentially the same as the Epic Storm. Rite of Flame became Grim Monolith, which works with Opal, and then Burning Wish became Transmute. Otherwise, it's almost the same deck. Yeah. So the way Transmute Artifact works, and this is going to be very important, is that it only looks for colorless mana and the uh, mana value of the artifact we're finding. So if we sacrifice, say, a Mox Opal to find Volus, it'll only pay the full six mana, correct? Correct. Uh, but if it's Grim Monolith... Then, then we only a... need to pay it, uh, an additional four. Correct, and Monolith taps for three. So you can get some interesting um, starts out of that. The one thing I'm worried about here, Alex, is Force of Vigor. It's a very, very popular legacy card. That said, we do have some Orm's Chance in our deck that stop Force of Vigor, unlike Veil of Summer. You might be wondering why we're playing white. That's it. Uh, Andre thought through this, and Veil of Summer just doesn't protect Sid at all, so you have to make the swap. You don't really have a choice. Yeah, there's not that much Force of Vigor being played in Legacy these days, especially due to the other white card in our sideboard, Prismatic Ending. Yeah. And then the best artifact removal in the format being a sorcery is a really interesting spot for this deck to be in where you're not going to run into disenchant or wilt or other similar instant speed effects that could destroy or Colgan's command uh, in some crazy world where you have all these options at instant speed, but the Citadel, they're just not plays. So the Citadel's fine. Yeah. One interesting thing about this deck is we actually have a sideboard juke plan uh, we're referencing our good friend Wilson Hunter here, but we're sideboarding into Monastery Mentor paired with a bunch of interaction. So in some matchups where maybe you don't want to be the combo deck, you don't have to be. You can switch the control role. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's what we gain by not running the Burning Wish package. It's an interesting deck. Uh, I'm not sure how we do. Honestly, going into this, I'd be happy with a 3-2. Uh, I think that this deck... It's tough because, Alex, I'm sure you can relate to this. The The bar to get into Legacy is so high for a combo deck where it has to truly be doing something broken or different for a reason to play it. And I'm not sure if there is a reason to play this other than a love for Blossom Citadel, but maybe I'm wrong and maybe a Transmute Artifact is just bananas. Who knows? Yeah, I and mean, the card's basically Tinker. And I, I know you love that card on all your vintage content, so... I do love Tinker. So if you're looking to support this Tinker-like content, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. Those are all free things to do. It's simple and easy. It gets us into that YouTube algorithm. And make sure that you 
see all the upcoming Tinker Lake content as well. Uh, we also have that join button right next to the subscribe button where you can check out our membership information, donation decks, cyborg guides. We have it all in there. Definitely read that info. And then we have the epicsworm.com slash donation decks where you can submit your combo brew to be featured here on this very channel. And maybe if you're lucky, you can have the Alex McKinley look at your deck. We also have the epicsworm.com slash shop where you can get card singles as well as sweet, sweet store merchandise like the Storm 20 baseball tee or Alex's favorite pint glass. We also have the token pack. Fairly new, came out last month. For $13, you get 128 tokens. They're really 64 double-sided tokens. But you get everything from slime time tokens to squirrels and goblins on the back, as well as everything you saw in that first slide. That's our intro. Alex, let's go to round one. I'm sure we're going to crush. I'm going to need your help here because you're the you're the storm master. I'm just the novice. So uh, I'm going to need you to carry me this league. You in? All right, let's go. All right, match number one against Tilting Crackers. We're on the play, Alex. Pretty good. Let's see uh, what our opening hand has in store. This seems very reasonable against a pretty wide range of decks, so I'm into keeping this. Alex, I knew you would have kept it. has Blue Source Brainstorm. I know you too well. <laughs> yeah, what else do you need? It's a legacy, Brian. That's true. <laughs> All right, so I think I just like Misty Pass here. How do you feel? I think I like that. Uh, Mr. Rainforest is the most meaningless land in the format, uh, given the prevalence of all blue decks. So this could put us on anything from Bant to Delver to Jeskai. We're getting thought seized. No Veil of Summers. Yeah, I mentioned if this Orb Channel was a Veil right here. But so we're uh, probably gonna brainstorming... hide this diamond. Yeah. Uh... Is it diamond or is it? So we can hide one diamond. Has... Yeah. What if? Or like we could uh, put back defense grid under brainstorm and show them two chant to two LED. But I that's don't care about the thing, right? Yeah, that, that's why I'd put it back there, but. But we can't fetch it away, so I feel like putting it back isn't great. Like, if we put Brainstorm on top of Diamond, we can play out Diamond next turn, chant them in their upkeep, chant them in their upkeep, and then fresh Brainstorm. Sure. I don't know. So thoughts he said of our opponent generally means that uh, they're doing something unfair, like Reanimator. Maybe in some crazy world they're playing Ant. Probably made us take a chant here. Yeah. They could also be playing Doomsday. Um, though Doomsday doesn't normally play, play Basic Swamp. The early list did, but not so much anymore. So yeah. I'm with you. I don't think that it's Doomsday. Also, I like to think that Doomsday players uh, have some style and that they probably wouldn't uh, be using that Swamp. Oh, that's a... I thought that was a lower one Swamp. Okay, that's much less interesting. All right. We're going to upkeep chant them. Upkeep. Target you. No kicker. I didn't realize we have two underground seats in our deck. Okay. I Are think they we're pox? facing pox, yeah. And we cannot chant them with the kicker anymore. Alright, let's brainstorm. Sure. See if we can convert these. Okay. Um, so, next turn we can transmute. Mm-hmm. Um, actually, that doesn't work. So I'm going to want to put the transmute on the bottom. Because we need to play out the yeah. Grim Monolith. Yeah, one of the bigger problems with Grim Monolith is that it doesn't make blue mana. So you can't cast Grim Monolith into a uh, transmute artifact. And that's one of the problems with transmute artifact in general, is that you don't have a ritual to easily make blue blue. And in Legacy, when your rituals make black mana and red mana generally. Cards that cost other colors like AB and uh, Transmute Artifact become a lot harder to justify and and cast in general, so. All right, Robert has entered the battlefield. I think mm -hmm. we just play the uh, Monolith here. 
there's no reason to play the grid. Um, like our opponents are just so unlikely to have something that interacts with us that we'd rather spend that mana. Lingering souls. Are are we in 2011, Brian? We might be. I'm pretty sure that Lingering Souls was printed before I was born. So, uh, can you tell me what that card does? Lingering Souls? <laughs> uh, it's a 3 yeah. mana sorcery that makes 2 one, 1 Flying Spirit tokens. And you can flash it back for a black and one colorless. That said, wow. Dead Guy Ale top aided the first Legacy, or made the finals of the first Legacy GP. I believe that was 2006. It was uh, Chris Pakula, and Chris lost to Patron of the Aki out of Goblins. Fun fact. Anyway, let's put our good uh, 2019 oh no. card in the Oh no, play. oh no, I need to dissect Diamond. I. I oh, uh, fuck. Um, okay, well, I guess I can get Wish Claw. Wait, do we get a trigger? How does it work? Is it a trigger or is it just part of the spell? It's part of the spell. I think it's a replacement I, I, effect. I yeah. need to dissect a Diamond, so I can get Wish Claw here. Okay. Hunt number one has already happened. Um, we gotta figure out how our cards work. All right, it's uh, I mean, I should have known better, but not the end of the world. I also could have echoed. Maybe echo is better there. I mean, we haven't played a land yet, so they're both about the same. Okay. All right. Ooh, that's a good one. And it's important to hold control on cantrips because you can often respond to them. We're going to shuffle yeah. that. Okay, um, so we can go get another Wish Claw Talisman with this. Yeah. All right, well, it's Ritual. And that's why it's important to hold control. Uh, um, this another is just option is... We, we get Wish Claw into Tendrils. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Opponents are... Oh, and there's the Tendrils. You've been chanted. Turns out Andre just built an idiot-proof deck, and that's what uh, he needed for me <laughs> to get match wins. So thank you, Andre, for making this deck idiot-proof. All right, we got game number one over Dead Guy L. Woot woot. Um, right. um, so I think Alex, we probably want these prismatic endings. Do you think we want the juke plan? Uh, we could think about it. I'm not sure that we do. Um, I do think ending is like probably just... reasonable. I'm not sure. Yeah, I think we can just like kill our opponent and we just like board out two chance and two grids. Do you think it's crazy to bring in two force over two chant? It does stop the citadel, but. Yeah, know. that is definitely one of the problems with force of will is that it's really awkward with uh, force of will or the other way around. Yeah. Um... I think this is probably fine. It's a friction yeah. that I've experienced a lot, a lot in Vintage, where you reveal Flusterstorm or Force of Will, and all of a sudden your Citadel doesn't work anymore. It's actually the reasons that they say that uh, Dark Petition Storm and Vintage is the best Citadel deck. That said, um, that deck stinks, so don't play DPS. But PO is realistically the best Citadel deck. It's just it happens to play a bunch of counter spells. How do you feel about mm -hmm. this, McKinley? Uh, Santa has a bunch of mana and some removal spells, but like it doesn't go anywhere. Honestly, I kind of like keeping it against the discard deck and just like hoping at the top of our deck favors us. Yeah, I'm kind of into playing turn one Grim Monolith too. Um, maybe even pitching the Dark Ritual. And the Thoughtseize. We'll see what they take here. We could have boarded in two mentor over the two chant, by the way. That also could have worked. I just thought I don't that. know. I just assume a lot of uh a lot of these style decks are playing mind breaks on the side where these is. Fair. Maybe that's too like cowardly, but card is that's... certainly much more popular than it used to be. That's true. Dark ritual. Mike's diamond. I don't know what's happening anymore. <laughs> okay. That's very beatable for us. So they are hellbent. And they got batter skull. Okay. Okay. Um so in order to answer the stone forge, we need to imprint 
And I think I'm okay with that. Yeah. So because they found Batter Skull, we have to answer the Stone Forge. If they had found like Cauldra, we could have just answered uh, the Germ Token. Make sure you tap for two colors. Okay. So they're Hellbent uh, other than a Batter Skull. So we have some time here. Ooh, That's I shouldn't have opened up my them. fat mouth. Um, so I want to play out the black source here in case we get hemmed. Um, mm -hmm. It's just like kind of free to do. And we're just begging to draw Wishclaw Talisman now? Or Transmute Artifact? Yeah, Transmute would be great. Sorry, I just hit my desk. My mic's probably angry at me right now. A diamond. Okay. All right, we'll put all of our stuff into play. I wonder um, if I should fetch before the saga goes off. Probably, because I think we do want a black source. Uh, yeah. So right. we're we're knocking the top of our deck for an eight hour. Uh, I guess nine if you include the echo viands. Yeah. We also have. Uh, ooh. Oh no. Yeah, it's brutal. That's that's getting something scary. Uh, there. Oh, no, never mind. That's not how that works. I was like, wait, are they about to shuffle it away with Saga? But you draw the card before you search. Yeah. Canonist. That's brutal. Yeah. So we've already used two copies of Prismatic Ending. Uh, that said, if we draw into. The transmute, we could still go get. Uh... Oh, they don't have a land to play the canonist here. Yeah, I don't think that's an issue for them though. They have the cage. This stops us from casting spells with uh, Citadel. Oh, oh, you're right. And <laughs> echoes our other that. engine. Yeah, I think we're pretty dead here. Yeah. Okay. So that is one big downside to Bolas to Citadel in the current legacy environment. Um, is that uh, Bolas to Citadel gets answered way easily, more easily by Grapdigger's Cage through Urza's Saga, which is really awkward. Yeah. I think I'm going to do this. I don't think we need the chance. Yeah. And this allows us a little bit of a backdoor to beat something like Canonist or Cage. Turn one Mentor, play more artifacts. What could go wrong? Alright, the third game. We have Turn one Wishclaw Talisman. Um, I think that this is a keep. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Unfortunately, we have to sacrifice the pedal, but I still think it's worth playing out. Mm -hmm. So if we draw a Dark Ritual of Alliance at Diamond next turn, we can play the Citadel. Correct. Ideally, Lion's Eye Diamond because you'd have you'd play a land if it was Dark Ritual. That said, I would honestly take a Dark Ritual, but you've already made your land mm -hmm. drop. Um, okay. I think I just pass. Yeah. Like, it's just not worth echoing here, I think. I agree. Like, uh, we have an answer to a hate bear if they play it. Uh, Robert. I don't care about Dark Confidant almost at all. Okay. Let's go get Tundra. Mm. Mm -hmm. Are we supposed to echo here? Because even if uh, I wait a turn, I can't um, sit at all. I think I like the echo. Let's do it. Yeah. Echo of Aeon select. Let's do it. Two open mana. We've already played a land. What does the wheel have in store for us, Alex? 
Yeah, I think Echoes out of this deck are going to be a little bit more awkward than out of TES on average, because you need four mana to win. Um, uh, so we have Storm two, 1. 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, so we're a mana short. If we ponder into something we can imprint, um, that would do it. I mean, we also, like, maybe their Bob kills them is another option. Or like a, another dark ritual or something off this would be even better than something to imprint. There's a diamond. Um, uh, diamond lets us citadel. We might be able to wish claw chain as well. True. I'm not sure about that. I'm just so talking four, about five, six. Uh, claw is seven. Claw is eight. I think we're one short. Uh, now. Tendrils is lethal. Um. So it's, yeah, we're one mana short. So right now we have to decide between, do we want to put Citadel in play, or do we want the potential for Robert to kill themselves? Old Dark Confidant. What do you like, Alex? Are we leaving it in the fate of Dark Confidant or Blossom Citadel? That's tough. Like, we've already played a land. So it's really rough if we just like put Citadel into play and then get wrecked by having a land on top of our deck. We also gave them a tutor, so... Uh... Yeah, so passing the turn is real awkward either way, but... Hmm. I don't know. Part of me thinks that we should just Tendrils. Yeah. Alright, you're gonna flip Lingering Souls. Or mind yeah, if we had drawn another card to imprint a Chrome Mox, um, instead of the Pair of Lands, would have just have it. But are they guess Oh, they Swords their... Wait, what? They left in Swords. They've... Oh. Oh, no. Well, we're at 35. We have some time. Uh, but it's not looking too great for us. They have Chrome Mox in their deck? What? Chrome Mox, Mox Diamond, Swords to Plowshares. Our opponent is playing a strictly uh, superior deck than us. Apparently. Oh, Wasteland 2. Oh, we're so dead. Chains of Mephistopheles, <laughs> sure. Right. Um, Monastery Mentor. Ending. I think we should probably get rid of the chains. I guess. I just think of cantrips. They're just gonna discard us, so like we might as well hit something with it. It's sort of weird that they didn't wasteland us and instead held up the curl mox. Yeah. I don't know. I think that they're probably thinking this is garbage time. That's brutal. Uh that's also brutal. My they haven't even activated either of the claws yet. There's Ponder. That's not bad. Alright, we have to shovel that. It's an artifact, so we can play it. Yeah, there's like no reason not to. So our draws so far off the Citadel would have been ending into Grim Monolith. So we uh, would have... Actually, uh, uh, ending would have stopped us because we don't have a zero to target, right? Like, you can only ending for one or zero uh, because you can't scale for X. And they didn't have Chrome. You can, target, uh, you can target anything with ending. It's oh, we could the same way that a Pyroblast is. Oh, uh, we could have targeted the Chrome Mox, though. Um, yeah, clear the top too. Um, but there, there's no like, yeah, you can target anything with prismatic ending, I believe. And they're using the wish claw. Okay, we can put mentor into play next turn. I'm afraid that they'll. Uh, I don't want to say it, but uh, needle, or if they have their own copy of ending to remove the claw. 
Maybe. I can't believe they left in swords. Yeah, that's wild. So we do have the Citadel in the deck. We do not have Echo. But Citadel is not even good when there's a cage in play. Yeah. The Reservoir could, in theory, keep us alive slash win, but it's a little bit of wishful thinking. Our opponent is at four, so if we could draw, um, like, Lotus Petal, we could Tendrils for lethal. The Tendrils is in our graveyard. Oh, that's correct. Seal cleansing. That's, our... that's pretty good against our deck. May finally use yeah. the wasteland. Um, we could get reservoir. I, I, we I can guess. get a wish flaw. Uh, I don't know. I think we're gonna die very quickly to their Urza saga. That's kind of what I foresee happening in this game. Well, let's focus on us trying to win rather than how we'll lose. Let's think about ways to win the match. So if we can, we can actually go get Blossom at all. That's probably just the best thing to do. Even though we can't cast cards off the top, we can play lands and get closer to a cage that would then blow up that, or get closer to an ending that would then blow that up. We don't uh, have enough mana to get the Citadel, right? Oh, you're right. We're one short. We just have to pass, I think. Yeah. Another saga. Boo. Sure. Boo. Okay. Yeah. Six, six. That's a six, six. So we're going to take nine. Probably or ten. ten. We're at 31, so we have a couple draw steps. Yeah. Like one more draw step, I think. Yeah, and we can't cast any spells off the Citadel, I believe, due to Cage. So we're probably just dead here. Yeah, there's also the Cannonist in play. Well, theoretically, we could actually win through that due to the. Um, what is it called? Yep. The Reservoir. Yeah. Yeah, I can put Citadel into play now. Yeah, but we're just dead on board, I believe. Yeah. But we get the moral victory of putting Citadel on onto the battlefield. And we can't play that, and now we're dead. Yep. Brutal. Apparently we made the wrong choice with the tendrils. Should have known about Swords of Plowshares, Alex. Um, I needed you to carry me, and you weren't here uh, to do that. Yeah, I don't know. It's 100% uh, your fault, and I accept no responsibility in this loss. Uh, That's how it always works, is it's uh, never Brian's fault on this channel. <laughs> so I need right. the channel. Well, uh, on a serious note, my decision didn't pan out. It happens. Uh, but Alex, I'm confident we're going to get there in one of these matches. Our opponent happened to have some pretty good cards against us here. I'm not going to worry too much about this. We're going to get the next one. Don't go anywhere. All right. Match number two, Alex. And we are facing someone that I gave a tutoring session to just a few weeks ago. And I don't know if they're playing the Epic Storm. If I had to guess, they probably are. I don't know if we're allowed to keep this hand. I don't think so, but I didn't know you did tutoring. Where can I sign up for some of that? TheEpicStorm.com slash tutoring. And Alex, since I like you so much, yours can be free, but everyone else, you're going to have to pay for it. You can uh, read the descriptions over at TheEpicStorm.com slash tutoring. Uh, bad jokes. Uh, Alex, I think we have to ship this, especially in the mirror. That said, our deck has four aces in it with Orm's Chant. This hand doesn't have any chants in it. Um, would you keep this or would you go to five? I think the Reservoir and the Tendrils are essentially mulligans. Yeah, they're like real sus in this hand. And I think we're probably going to be winning this game with Reservoir to begin with, especially for against uh, the Epic Storm, given the four Veil of Summers that they have. And this, this hand is just 
also awkward, but... I mean, we have the one scrub land instead of the two tundras. I think we're forced yeah. to keep it. Yep. And again, this is why Transmute Artifact is awkward. Uh, it's still two draw steps away from us casting it at a minimum. Yeah. And yeah. everything our opponent has played so far says that they're still playing the Epic Storm, so... Here We're we really go. really looking for this chant to do some heavy lifting. Yep. There's there's a time period when I was much younger, closer to Alex's age, where the Storm Mirror was defined by chant effects. Sounds in particular. Okay. Alright, so we're I just definitely gonna... don't think that we want to crack this Lotus Petal to play either of our two mana artifacts. Given that that's blue source number one. And uh, our opponent is also respecting us back. All right, land. Okay. I think we just pass. Yeah. So the magic number to Wishclaw for Citadel is nine. And right now we have... Uh... I have zero interest in using Wishclaw. I think that we need to transmute because we can't get chanted in response. So okay. that's what I would be looking at. And if you use Wishclaw and get chanted, uh, yikes. Yeah, that's probably game losing. Ah, what a beautiful mana base. Wow. What geniuses created this, Alex? <laughs> Um, I think we just pass. Yeah. A lot of layers and dynamic gameplay here of uh, having to respect Orm's chant and stuff like that. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, Underground Sea is great. Uh, so I think we just play Grim Monolith. Yep. We could Ritual into both. Wishclaw and Monolith. Uh... Hang on. Uh, so it's eight mana to transmute. So it's five, six, or we're, we're mana is short. But we, we'll be able to do it next turn regardless. I'm going to do it. I want to cast both of these. Okay. I think our opponent's a little bit confused now that they're not facing the 75 card mirror. That is probably true. Grim Monolith. Also, Bryant, we're geniuses for getting uh, pulverized out of the Epic Storm. <laughs> <laughs> it's one way to not lose the Storm Mirror. Yeah. But we will get to use our Juke plan and board in all those forces. Yeah. Is this an Echo? Nope. Okay. It's just a not discard a hand size. So we can play Citadel here. Um... Yeah. I think Brian's playing the land out here because he doesn't expect to like live long after the Citadel. Well, um, I want to be able to keep up also, the hand. Yeah, and that as well. Um, do I have to float the... No, it, it gives me a pay trigger. Yeah. You, yeah, you get a window to activate mana abilities. <laughs> so lucky. Um, I think that that's actually a pretty good pile to keep. Uh, we can put Transmute Artifact on the bottom, uh, Dark Ritual in the middle, and Petal on top to draw it. Yeah. Uh, because the Transmutes at this stage can become um, the the four mana artifact. Uh, Reservoir. Reservoir, yeah. We can just sec uh, pedal here. Yeah. Is it. Well, I guess me. I think we probably should have done Wish Claw because I have to tap out for. Um... Yeah. We could get Grid. I think Grid might honestly be the play here. Okay. Because now they can't uh, chant us in response. Mm -hmm. Okay, ponder, hold priority. 
So there's another transmute, which I think is pretty good. Yeah, I think we've got it from here. Yeah. Uh, given our opponent's been enchanted, we can just put Tendrils of Agony on this deck at this point. Why are you trying to ruin my fun, McKennels? Uh, I don't know. I like winning the game, generally. Oh, you like winning the game? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know that. Well, I'm going to go get Aetherflux Reservoir. Our opponent's been um, chanted, so sacking the uh, defense grid doesn't really matter. Reservoir plus Citadel is kind of neat. Not gonna lie. We're just doing the wild oh. stuff. And now we get to Echo. <laughs> Could have just killed them with the Echo on the stack. <laughs> oh, well, that was fun. I'm here to All have right. fun. <laughs> yeah, I think that that's exactly what this deck wants to do. I think Transmute Artifact makes a ton of sense in this Citadel deck. Uh, the, the Reservoir is a really smart inclusion. Yeah. The fact that it beats Veil Summer is just beautiful. Yeah. Um, so I think we want to do this. But the question is, what do we board out? I almost feel like it's Dark uh, Ritual, uh, because it doesn't, like, I don't know, maybe that's crazy. Yeah. So what if what if we just put the Mentors in the deck as well? We could. It's just finding slots, right? Yeah, you just board out all the combo pieces. So are you, we're boarding out Wish Claws. Probably the tendrils, because it yeah. doesn't be veil somewhere anyway. So this, something like that, yeah. Do we want ending? I don't. I don't know, to be honest. Let's just try this. Yeah. <laughs> this deck is so insane. That was a lot of fun. Like we did that all while like. Our opponent was maybe holding up uh, a Veil of Summer or an Orm's Chant. Uh, I don't think that this hand functions, not going to lie. It does not, unfortunately. Although, you can almost cast Citadel. Like, if we had a Lotus Petal, I think this hand is actually a keep. Like, yeah. a Lotus Petal over, like, the Orm's Chant. All right, we're going to keep this in bottom the Citadel. Yeah. What are the odds we just blow our opponent out of the water with force and negation? I think it's pretty good. Uh, that's what we call Brewer's Advantage. Although I don't like the idea of us beating the Epic Storm on camera, so we might need to delete this match. Thoughts? <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know. I've, I've never seen the Epic Storm lose in my life, so. Yeah, I've never lost in my life, so. True. Certainly not round one. Yeah. This this game certainly feels like it's going to come down to uh, our opponent conceding the game rather than us Winning. literally reducing their life total to zero. Yeah. We are the control deck. Oh, man. I just thought of a really gross interaction of, like... Uh, you end up relaying um, in the mirror or something like that. You just silence your opponent on the relay turn. Yeah. How insane is that? Not a fan. Yeah. That said, I think it's usually a pretty screen situation in which you're using relay in the mirror. Yeah. Uh, Galvanic relay, very slow magic card. Despite other appearances. We call it redneck girl for a reason. You do have to wait a turn to use the cards. Yeah. Watch out uh, next month for my article about how to Galvanic Relay. Is that your topic? How to cast the three yeah. mana sorcery? Okay. Yep. What do you think about casting Brainstorm here? Possibly converting this monolith into a land? I like that. Hey. We didn't hit a blue card off it, though, which is kind of a bummer. Yeah. But next turn I can play Mentor into We should have played we should have played the pedal this turn. Oh, because I could hard cast the sorry, I was yeah. thinking about monks. So here's an awkward thing. Technically next turn I could play Mentor Pedal, but if they chant me in response to Mentor, then I don't have 
uh, chant up and we only have the force. Mm -hmm. So I think part of me, like, I think we probably want to fetch. I don't think we want to redraw the opal. I agree. An opponent just being super patient. Either that or their hand just isn't functioning very well. There we go. Land was actually not a bad draw. So this cannot get scrub land, so we have to fetch first. Um, let's see. Let's see. Monastery Menta. It's like right, we've established here. a clock. Um, I think if we can survive this turn cycle, I think we have a very good shot of winning this game. Any thoughts on casting Ponder? Uh, I don't hate it. This like sweet. We're playing White and TS, and we're not playing Mentor. I own nice mentors. Why aren't we playing them, Alex? <laughs> Uh, so I could take uh, Opal and then draw Ponder next turn, and it represents Lethal. Sure. All right, let's go. And now our opponent is sort of being forced to do something here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think that there's um, a couple people that you know that really like this Monastery Mentor card, like your uh, podcast host, uh, Brian Cobalt, is that his name? Uh, yeah, I've heard of him before. He uh, he makes videos too, right? Uh, uh, Bish and Roll, or what is it? Troll and Toad? Um, uh, um, I think it's Troll and is Toad. Is it like Darksteel Colossus? Is that his YouTube channel? It might be. And then there's... Uh, Karn, uh, my... Karn Silver Golem? Maybe. Uh, and then there's my <laughs> former podcast co-host, Wilson Hunter, also a mentor enthusiast. Anurag mm. Das hated Mentor and then changed his attitude later on, so I don't know what his deal is. All right, well, it looks like our opponent is taking uh, some game actions here. I think this is just like Ad Nauseam. Yeah, probably. So they have two cards, which I don't believe can be our three cards. Ooh, uh -oh. sorry, opponent. Yeah. <laughs> One. Quick, delete the VOD. There's only four <laughs> matches in this league. Exactly. Well, Alex, we got our first win. We're one and one. I think we're going to get the next three, and I definitely didn't just jinx us, so don't go anywhere. More hilariously great magic coming up. McKinnells. It's match number three. We're on the play. I know you love being on the play. And, uh... I want to keep this. That's great. Any objections? Yeah. Nope. Okay. Yeah, this hand is great. Uh, if we draw mana, if we draw an initial mana source next turn, we have a protected hard cast echo. Um. So it's basically just another Lotus Petal is our only option for that, but I don't know. The sand does a lot of things. I would take a Diamond, too. Yeah. Wish Claw could allow for uh, some floating mana. Yeah, this is just your stock TES hand. Could open this, up, this hand up playing that deck. Burning Wish for Force Negation, is that allowed? Uh... No, for several reasons. <laughs> I think we're forcing negation, though. Our opponent's taking a mulligan. <laughs> Excuse me. Bless you. Such an ugly sneezer. <laughs> I felt it coming for like two minutes before it happened, and I was like, don't do it. Hold it in. Hold in the sneeze. Didn't work. Ryan just needs to find his mute key faster. Everyone's pondering their six cards quite deeply. Um, Do you think that they might be considering them? Ah, it's a distinct possibility. Maybe they'll opt Scouring for a new their hand. thoughts. <laughs> as long as there's no sleight of hand tricks. Yeah. Maybe they're brainstorming up some new possibilities. Yeah. Considering which iterations of five cards could be better. 
We already used consider cheater. I said iterations. That's the pun. Okay. <laughs> and our opponent has kept their six card hand off to the races. I'm just hoping that whatever our opponent's playing gets blown out by Orm's Chant. One cast in Tomb, Orm's Chant. They went to blow them out with this Echo Beyond. Shuffle whatever they have Tomb for back into their deck. Arid Mesa. Uh, so this could be like Burn, this could be the... Uh, Jeskai um, deck. Jeskai, or there was a Zoo deck that did well recently. Uh, another Dark Ritual is not exactly what we needed. I think I'm just going to pass here and see what they do. If they fetch for, like, Plateau or whatever, I'm just going to chant them. Yeah. I guess it could be Painter. And that would be a reason to not fire off chant. Scalding Tarn. Getting some blue vibes here, Alex. Yeah, it looks looks like Jeskai to me. Oh, it is Painter. Blue-red Painter. Brian's a genius. Don't tell him that, though. Yeah, definitely don't let me know that. My ego might swell up too large. Uh, so now we have it. Yeah. Granted, no, one of the problems with it no being kick Painter up. is that if, if this gets forced, then uh, it's much more likely that our opponent has... Uh, answers. Well, the nice thing about leading on Chant is that you can decide if you want to wait a turn or not, where if you um, go ahead and cast the Dark Rituals, you're sort of priced into going for it here. Yeah, if our opponent dazes this Orum Chant, I believe we cast a Dark Ritual in response. Uh, the third one's a tad redundant. Hey, you know, oh, okay. Let's spin that wheel. Ah, yes. We would like to draw eight whole cards. Oh, we're only allowed to the draw echoes. seven. Uh, I don't know. The echo goes in a graveyard. That's like drawing eight cards to me. Well, if you tell your opponent you're going to draw eight, they're probably calling a judge. Just throwing that out there. Hmm. But we have three mana floating. We do have a land drop. Yeah, I don't hate these odds. Opponent might be considering double pitch ESG murder you. Uh, so Storm is seven. We can play Monolith Reservoir Opal and then land Transmute. I think we might uh, just have it here because then we can transmute for LED into Echo. Yep. Reservoir. On reading our card. Okay, and I think we just sacked the opal because we're getting LED yeah. anyway. And I we can do Alex's favorite thing of uh, killing our opponent with Echo on the stack. It's, it's a Lux Reservoir card. It's pretty powerful. I wonder if it's better than Tendrils. It does gain life. Kablam! And our opponent's been chanted, so even if they had a Lightning Bolt here, they couldn't cast it. Boom. Yeah, that thought did enter my my head for a hot second. Um, do we want any of our sideboard cards? I think we just resubmit, but I'm open uh, to suggestions. Uh, we might want a copy of Ending or two. The uh, blue painter decks tend to play copies of Urza Saga, which means that there might be Pithing Needles or uh, Graph Digger's Cages. And given that Graph Digger's Cage touched down both of our engines, uh, we might want answers to that. Do you recommend boarding out like one of each mocks then? That seems reasonable, I guess. It's either that or like Ponder, I think. Yeah, I don't know. There's a lot of Pyroblast, so maybe the blue cards aren't very good. Let's try this. If you haven't already, open up the description down below. There's a ton of great information in there, including our seven social media channels, where if you join our very public Discord, you can ask Alex questions directly. Like, hey, Alex, 
Why do you play Chromox in the Epic Storm? I've heard that card stinks. Alex will get huffy and puffy for five seconds, and then he'll drop some knowledge on you about why Chromox is a terrific card. Uh, you can ask him as many of these questions as you want all day in our Discord, and he'll answer most of them, I think, maybe. So definitely join our Discord and check that out. And Alex had no objections right there, so he clearly agreed. Definitely go and do that. Yeah. No, the Discord's a great place. There's lots of people willing to hang out and talk about all sorts of flavors of Storm. Uh, Epic Storm, Ad Nauseam Tendrils, Ruby Storm, and all of its various flavors. Uh, we even recently added a High Tide channel, or if you're interested in other formats like Modern and Popper, uh, formats I know that Bryant loves, uh, casting Unroll Breach and uh, Untapping whatever the, Lotus the, Field. Yeah, tapping Lotus Field or cycling cards. Um, yeah, it's a great place to be. We're about, there's a couple thousand, 1,200, 1,300 people in there right now. So pretty active. If you have questions, you'll get an answer pretty fast. Game number two versus Painter. We have Dark Ritual Citadel. How could you ship this, Alex? Eh. <laughs> this is a snap keep. We have Island Brainstorm Ritual Citadel. We have right. two if pair. You say so. It's two pair. I mean, technically, they're not the same, but, you know, two-card Monty-esque. Yeah, best combo of Legacy Island Brainstorm. Yeah, exactly. Our opponent thinking pretty hard about their mulligan. Mm -hmm. It looks like they've decided six. to ship. Yeah. So you might be watching this going like, well, Bryant, why didn't you board in Force of Negation or Force of Will versus the blue combo deck? Well, they're also a deck that likely has a bunch of uh, Pyroblast effects. So we are giving them more targets by boarding in these and making ourselves more diluted. So they're going to have more time to assemble their slow combo. And it's just not really what you want, in my opinion, because you're, you're making yourself slower while playing into their strength. Okay, mm -hmm. so Delta. Let's yeah, that's a pretty good draw. Yeah, certainly not mad about Orm's Chant. We're going to brainstorm into another Dark Ritual, send them, you know, straight to the 1 2 bracket. We'll go to 2 1, go make a sandwich, come back. We'll be great. So Alex, you've been playing a bunch of the Epic Storm version 12.5 recently. How do you feel have... about the deck right now? Deck feels great. Feels very good versus blue decks. You still have that option to like go off extremely quickly. Uh, I think it's the second best Dark Ritual deck in the format uh, to Doomsday. Um, I think that it provides a pretty unique angle against Delver that Doomsday generally has been lacking. And the inclusion of the white cards hasn't made the deck weaker. It's made it much stronger. Uh, Defense Grid is a little bit outdated with regards to the format uh, of Ragavan and Prismatic Ending with more answers running around and your opponent's just hitting three mana way faster uh, on average. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and I do agree with you that Doomsday is a better combo deck at the moment. That said, TS actually has a fairly positive Delver matchup at this point. Uh, both Alex and myself both are hovering around a 65% match win percentage against Blue Red Delver, uh, and Doomsday cannot say the same. I think the argument in Doomsday favor is that it's better against the field, which is hard to deny. That said, in the winner's metagame, I think I'd rather be playing the Epic Storm personally. Yeah. I'm still thinking about their play here. Uh, do you want to realize about this deck, Brian? I think... I don't like the mana base of the deck we're playing today. Why is uh, that? Yeah. Uh, so I don't think the basic island is very good in this deck. I think it would make a lot more sense to be playing like basic swamp. Uh, like we don't have that many cantrips. I mean, we have eight blue cantrips, right? Like that's not nothing. Yeah. But, like we have a bunch of blue duels, and like duel lands are pretty good right now. Uh, and like 
Island isn't really a card that is very good. Granted, we do need double blue a lot, so I think that's why cards like Scrubland aren't very good. But also, I think if we just chose our fetch lands a little bit better, if we had uh, thought out playing um, uh, Flooded Strain instead of Misty Rainforest, that makes a lot more sense. Okay. Uh, because Misty Rainforest, it can't find our Scrubland, whereas Flooded Strain, it can. That's probably my fault and not Andre's. Uh, Andre's list was originally four colors for two orm or for two Veil of Summer, and I trimmed it to be Esper, so I could have made that switch. Uh, that that's on me. Yeah. And uh, after the opponent has fallen asleep at the wheel, they're back and they have played cards, so they're just jamming their painter here. I think we're gonna cast a brainstorm and see what we can do. Yep. Opponents uh very threatening here. Like they they already have a tutor effect for the grindstone in the Ursa saga, so it's time to go. So they could daze this here, they could force. Uh notably this painter servant makes all of our chromoxes produce blue mana. If so if we draw a card like uh transmute artifact, we we always have blue cards to pitch uh to the chromox. Um it doesn't change the fact that we can't pitch uh artifacts or lands to it because of the way it's worded, but uh, hitting double blue is going to be a little bit easier. I don't know what's going to happen first. We win this game or our opponent times out. Yep. Yeah. Oh, it resolved. Uh, so, hold on. Can we... Uh, if this was Underground C, we'd have it. We could set up so we could chant Brainstorm into the Citadel. Mm -hmm. We have to shuffle in the middle. Um, so next turn we have one, two, three, four, five, six mana exactly. So we could try to just jam Citadel. Uh, and hope it resolves through days and force. But that, or I guess we have days covered via Lion's Eye Diamond. Um, Pardon me, you just wants to like put the one of the lands back and then cast Brainstorm. I don't know. Yeah, I don't hate that. Kind of run out of imprintables at that point, but... Okay. The jump from a 5-mana engine like Ad Nauseam to a 6-mana engine like Bolas the Citadel is feeling pretty noticeable to me. So, Brainstorm? Okay. Um... So, we can Chromox imprint... Prismatic ending into chant, but what can we yeah. do after that? We can put back one of the chrome moxes. I don't know if we can get there. Uh, we could put back the citadel at this point, uh, given we drew transmute artifact. Yeah, but I don't think we can make the mana to get to it. Yeah, unless we chant them in their upkeep. We can also end or ending the painter. I think that uh, ending the painter is like pretty reasonable on this board, though it's hard to do unless we pitch the dark ritual or something like that. Uh, well, because yeah, but it makes sense because then they could just, just power blast cast, the citadel. We could hard cast citadel if we imprint transmute. Oh, okay, that's a reasonable plan. So let's hide the citadel on top, I guess. All right, Chromox. I definitely redid how Painter Server interacts with some of the textures. Like, I think that the LED and the artifacts didn't used to be this blue, unless I'm forgetting something. Yeah, I don't know. Ending. Maybe I should have... I mean, I could have played an LED there to threaten the fact that I would pay for days. I don't think I'd actually discard my hand, though. Them picking up an island here is actually pretty punishing in terms of the saga. It means that they can't make uh, constructs. Force pitching power uh, blasts. Are we dead? I don't know. It takes, like... 
a Lotus Petal or an LED to win the game here? I think their plan is probably getting Grindstone with the Saga. Yeah. Um. Ooh. Oh. Wow. That hurt. I think we lose. Um, yikes. Yeah, because Orum Chan doesn't do anything because the Saga is the thing finding the grindstone. Um, we know that our top card is Chrome Mox and we Chrome can't Mox. cast it. Yeah. Yeah, they got us. Yep. Yeah, Graphnikos Cage just demolishing this deck is really unfortunate. Mm -hmm. Alright, I think we just leave it. I don't think we need four endings. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah. This this is an example of why uh, the Epic Storm continues to play green for cards like Abrupt Decay. Uh, like, when you need to remove a permanent in these combo versus blue deck uh, matchups, you just need it gone and you can't have your opponent asking questions about it. Uh, I think we should chip this. Yeah. Okay, uh, I think we just bottom the monolith and then see what's up. The monolith at the pedal, yeah. Well, they're both plus one mana on the combo turn, except this one can color fix. Yeah, I guess color fixing is kind of important, so. I wish our opponent would play a little bit faster. I'm going to fall asleep over here. Alex doesn't understand. Spry young chicken. Meanwhile, also got a three-hour time advantage on Bryant. That's true. It's a nice uh, early evening for me. Maybe their game plan is to bore us to death. Did we ever consider that? Yeah, we, we only have a seven-minute advantage on them clockwise. Someone mes uh, mentioned this a while ago, but if uh, you're down 15 minutes on clock, you should just automatically lose. I'd be interested in trying that world. Yeah. Or if you just start on lower timers to get like bonus time back for your actions, uh, kind of the way um, some chess formats do it. I don't think I'd ever Is be allowed to play uh, Twiddle Storm and Popper though, because that deck eats up the entire clock. Yeah, but if you get bonus time back, like it, say we had like, I don't know, 15 minute timers and you get five seconds per action. Uh, or five seconds per spell or something. Something that makes sense. That'd be pretty neat. When I'm playing the Popper Total Storm deck, you just need to be casting cards. So something that I'm d doing all sometimes is just like casting spells because you don't have time to sit there and think about the order that you cast them in because like you just have to get your deck empty. That's something I've experienced. Yeah. It's kind of what happens with Peer into the Abyss too, is just kind of start clicking on cards in your hand. Because it's so easy at that point. Oh, they've kept their hand. They've done something, Alex. It's a miracle. All right. It only took them five minutes to decide to keep her mulligan. Probably going to find Underground Sea here, given our dark rituals and stuff. Uh, so cards I'd like to see off this pond are land number two. Wow! All right, I just like all these cards. Hell yeah. Can we uh, cast Citadel next turn? Or is it a Force four, Echo? Three, four, five. Five, um, eight. We're short. Nine. We only have five. Yeah. yeah. So it's an Echo. Yep. Right, man. All right. Let's uh, cast this chant. Kind of a bummer that this isn't uh, Citadel. Yeah, Citadel costing that one extra mana. Ooh. Okay. Is uh, a little bit brutal. Go get the Echo. We'll have two floating here. So we don't need to put Citadel in play anymore. We are sort of looking at just getting Tendrils of Agony. So we want mana and then another Wish Claw. Uh... Oh, here's some mana, Bryant. That is technically a truth. I think we play grid and pass. Yeah. 
We could also decide to play Monolith as well, just like imprint one of these dark rituals. No, I don't think that's worth it. Okay. So this goes back to what Alex was saying about defense grid not aging well, because our opponent, due to having Ragavan, uh, will have three mana this turn. And even if we do draw an action spell, they will have force of will mana up, which is part of the reason the epics are moved away from grid. Another grim monolith. They might want to cast that. Yeah. It does allow for easier grindstone activations. Yeah, it also just mainly answers our defense grid. Uh, or if they have uh, some sneaky card in there. Oh, no, they can't have an old rod. There's no way this deck can play Null Rod. I'd be shocked if they had it. Yeah. I'd even be bolted. We're not doing that again, I'm sorry. Granted, this did uh, present our opponent with another decision, so... The whole me falling asleep thing over here was not a joke. I am dazing off. Oh, they've taken a game action. It's happened. No. Not Craft Digger's Cage. We can't beat that card. Alright, we just have to pass because our deck didn't give us any action. Yeah, I think we could have played the Grim Monolith there, but it seems unlikely to matter. So, I think the only way we win this game now is Natural Storm. So just like playing out spells for no reason doesn't make any sense to me. Fair. There is only one Echo in that this deck has access to, so... The Echo is removed. We flashed it back. Yeah, so we no longer have access to it. So both of our engines get shut down by Cage. <laughs> yeah. So this goes that back to a... the flexibility that Burning Wish offers, where we would have Pure here, or Ad Nauseam in the main. What's going on, opponent? Let's go. We're getting close to that dangerous 15-minute mark, Alex, where they should be forced to concede. Yeah, I think uh, this game is uh, pretty pretty over for us, but we do have the out of the clock. I mean, not realistically, but... Oh no, they've cast Brainstorm, the most skill-intensive card in Legacy. There's a chance. They're, they only have 6 minutes and 30 seconds on their clock. Anything's possible. It is kind of magical how slow players tend to end up playing a lot faster when their clock hits red. Yeah, it's pretty inconsiderate. I mean, they are entitled to their clock, and there might be internet connection issues or other real-life things going on, but... Yeah. All right, so we're just dead here because next turn they get Painter Grindstone and uh, another blank off the top. So, Alex, I'm going to save us uh, five minutes of waiting for them to figure out lethal, <laughs> and uh, I'm just going to concede here. We are now one and two. All right, Alex, we are facing a known Stone Blade enthusiast. How do you think our deck matches up against Stone Blade? Oh, probably pretty good. Uh... Well, they Yorian. revealed Yorian. I think we're allowed to just like see if they're actually on Death and Taxes or if they're just playing Yorian Blade. Yeah, we just like lead on Fluted Delta Go, brainstorm on their end of turn, hope to find uh, another mana to be oh. able to Citadel. I was thinking we just play Trim and Claw and then turn two brainstorm for protection. Oh, that's way better. I mean, we don't have to. It's just, I don't know. And since my uh, OBS is picking up, Anurag Das is blowing up our inbox right now. So inconsiderate. He should know that we're recording a video right now. He should just spider sense it. <laughs> this looks like a TES opening. Draw. All right, uh, let's cast Brainstorm, see if we can hit the uh, Orm's Chant. I think we need to put the Citadel back in our deck. We could hard cast Echo here. That would be the Force of Well. 
How do you feel about that? Yeah, let's go for it. All right, so let's just add a bunch of mana here. Blue, black, white. They mulligan to five pretty aggressively, so I'm willing to bet that they have a force of will at least. We're just hoping it's mm -hmm. not the other one. Brainstorm, okay. Echo. Hey. Okay. Um, so if this wish claw resolves, we just win. Yeah. Okay. I think that does it. Are we definitely putting the tendrils back? Um, <laughs> so we're actually a mana short. Um, we should play the grim model through it. Well, if they force it. I mean, if they force it, then. Like, we're not in a bad spot to, like, do other stuff next turn. You can flashback Echo. Yeah. All right, let's just uh, put Tendrils on the stack. Mm-hmm. Chicken Tendies. The awkward part is if they force this, uh, they go to one. All right, and they've conceded. We've gotten game number one over Yorian Blade. That's not something I thought I would have said this league. All right, so I think we probably want some of these endings. I'm not sure how many. Uh, we can maybe board in the Mentors. I don't think we want Forces. How would you board here, Alex? I don't know. I have no idea if the Mentor plan is good against this deck. Uh, I think Mentor kind of folds to... Uh, Stoneforge Mystic pretty hard. Okay. That'd be kind of where I'm feeling. I don't think we uh, want four ending. Uh, I think no. three could be reasonable or even two. I think I'd like two and then board out like some mana rocks or whatever. Yeah. Let's try this. Yeah, the Misties are my fault looking at it. Like those should probably just be scrub lands. Yeah. Uh, the sand seems pretty good. We have brainstorm to fix it up a little bit. I'm not in love with opening up reservoir, but we'll deal. We got a tutor. We got a piece of protection. We got some fast mana. You know. Okay. Ponder changes the land that I'm going to play here and just cast it. Do we want this? I think we need a shuffle to find an artifact to make this transmute artifact pretty good. Like that. Well, how about that? Will you just That's look at it? Vista. Yikes. And this is where not having decay uh, can bite you in the buns. Yeah. Because now you need to get ending to resolve. And you have to find it. <laughs> um, so we definitely get rid of that. So I think we're supposed to just play a monolith here and print this dark ritual. All right, let's pass. Okay. Ooh, I messed up. Oh no. I found Scrubland. I can't cast oh. Transmute Artifact. Yeah. Um, Wish Claw was a good draw. Yeah. I wish that there was like uh some sort of like reasonable artifact that we could find that could kill like canonists or something. I mean um, there's cards that exist. We're just not playing them. Yeah. The breacher. Well, so we are definitely on the Citadel plan. Um Yeah. Ouch. Yep. All right, they have three cards. I think we might just want to jam. Oh, no, we don't have the blue mana. Okay. Got to find something soon, especially given our life total is under so much pressure from the canonist. 
Uh, yeah. The other awkward part about it is that even if we get the Citadel into play, we can't cast a Prismatic ending off of it to kill a Canonist. That is true. So we would win by chaining artifacts into Aetherflux Reservoir um, to gain life. And there's our blue source. Yeah, I kind of have to go for it at this point. Blue. Transmute artifact. And if they force it, we can untap your monolith. Um, is reading our card carefully? It's just Tinker. No big deal. Yeah, it's got a pretty significant downside compared to Tinker. It was a joke, Alex. It was a joke. <laughs> that said, it's not an additional cost to sacrifice an artifact. A little bit different. Yeah. All right, let's untap our monolith. So the downside is we're about to go to two life. Yeah, I think I think we might be dead here. I'd agree. We can upkeep chant them, or just be dead to whatever they're playing here. Oh, uh, we're and just we're dead. done for. All right, so <laughs> let's go to game three. Do we want to bring in more copies of ending? I have no idea. I mean, I guess we could just like we just need to like keep jamming endings at our opponent to kill their stuff. Uh. It's definitely one of the problems with prismatic ending as compared to abrupt decay, especially when your opponent's playing canonist, because we can't do something like orange chant into prismatic ending. Yeah. Uh, ooh, portable hole would be a good addition in this deck, at least as a one of to find a transmute artifact. Yeah, that'd be a cool one. I don't know if we're supposed to board out. Uh, good trim a cantrip. Um... I don't think we need all four. Let's just trim up Hunter and call it a day. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. On the play. Hmm. I don't love it, but I think it's probably a keep. Yeah. Can't believe I fetched her scrub land last game. Like, in my head, I was already thinking that I needed Blue Blue, and then I was just like, oh, it's free to get Scrubland here. And it just, like, was the opposite of free. <laughs> Once on the mulligan to five, um, maybe looking for that hate bear. But, yeah, I, I'm beginning to think that this deck plays shockingly differently than TES, despite containing a lot of the same cards. Uh, that's pretty good. Yeah, it can allow us to uh, tinker for Citadel. Hmm. And we need the Lotus Petal that's on the bottom, or else we can't cast Transmute. Yep. Our opponent doesn't know what we're transmuting for, so I'm hoping it accidentally resolves. I don't know white mana, which is kind of interesting. So I think I'm going to play out a little bit of extra mana here just to make sure that we could pay for like a spell pierce or a fluster or something. Mm -hmm. I don't hate imprinting the tendrils here, but okay. Transmute. Good old fashioned counter target <laughs> spell. Classic. All right, we're actual, just gonna draw some counter off the top. spell. I mean, we did jam into open blue mana, so it's kind of our own fault. I mean, yeah, but who plays counter spells that cost mana? Prophetic Prism, <laughs> Legacy All Star. In this format, I was told uh, by some very prestigious fair players that ca that counter spells that cost mana are unplayable. You know, I've heard that in a lot of these Twitter discussions where people are defending old two mana counter spells. Hmm. All right, so the opponent's on six cards. Even though they mold the five, I feel like they're favored at this point. Yeah, we have a lot of cards that make mana. I feel like they uh, probably have back to basics in their deck. Just throwing that out there. Yeah, or they get a pulverture. Ooh, why did I not think of that before getting blown out here? <sighs> <laughs> oh, that was bad. I thought that was pretty obvious, but oh well. You could have warned me. You, <laughs> I you tried to. You were, me. 
you're casting the brainstorm as I was saying it. Viewers in the comments, did I warn him before he cast the brainstorm or after? Who knows? Nah, you jerk. Yep. So Echo is shut off as an out here. So if we draw another transmute, I can sack this, and then that's five. So we're actually one mana short. <sighs> Mistakes were made. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Echo's no longer an out. Meddling. So their list is just super hateful. Yeah. It's an intelligent name by the opponent. Um, there's definitely a higher cost in this deck of exiling the tendrils uh, than in the Epic Storm, because uh, we only have one win condition left. So I think if we want to win this game, we have to draw pretty much exactly uh, Transmute right here. Uh, I'm just going to call yeah. it. Yeah. One and three. I'll take I'll take the heat on this one. It was my own fault. Um, maybe we'll get the last one. All right. We are facing my podcast co-host, Phil Gallagher, for the bragging rights. Alex, I'm going to need you to let me know about Hull Breachers before I play into them in this match. Uh, I need to beat Phil. For my own morale, I, I just need it. So don't let me down. Jagantha. Gatha, the, that's really good for us. I really like beating up Jagantha decks because that uh, means that there's no Force Will, no Mind Break Trap. But deck is not cooperating. What the heck? We're going to five. Yeah. Um. This this four? plays. Does it? I'd rather just try to hit LED Echo than keep this garbage. Uh yeah, opponent's down to six. Um, so, for what it's worth, Gigantha could be a stacks type deck. True. Deck, I feel like, is letting me down a little bit right here. This is the best hand we've seen so far. Yeah. Actually, cancel. Um, the four. Okay. We're looking to draw lines at Diamond. Turn two, we're just jamming Wish Claw. Once upon a time. I have a I bad feeling that Phil's on an Eldrazi deck. I wonder if this is just the zoo deck. Maybe. Or it's some uh, donation brew. It's looking a little zoo-like here. It is! Yeah. Okay. How many stuff oh have you, have you played in against uh, in your day, Brian? I'm sorry? How many step links have you played against in your day? Many. Uh, there was a time period in between 2008 and 2011 where zoo was a tier 1 deck. Mm-hmm. Let's hope yeah, that it sounds like a, a wonderful deck from before I was born, but yeah. Yeah, it definitely was. Uh, I don't <laughs> know if this deck plays like a Berserk or not. Wasteland? Oh. Boo. Boo. Not a fan. All right, so we're getting catted. Well, I think I want to cast this Brainstorm here. I agree, especially with drawing Opal. Come on, Lines of Diamond. Um... Um, hmm. Does this let us Citadel next turn? That's what I'm trying to figure out. So we can play Monolith. We're one short of Citadel. Mm. So do we just um, Echo here then? Not show Phil the Spice? Yes. All right. So Phil, I have no idea that we are not the Epic Storm. Because I don't think Phil would pick up on Misty uh, not being in TES. Or the Defense Grid. Well, Grid used to be in TES, so I feel like 
you know? You can't fault someone for not knowing that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh... Um, so this technically transmutes for uh, LED, but I don't think that's good enough. We're a mana short of tendrils. Um, is there a way to play the transmute after we play the Wishwa Talisman or something? We uh, could ponder for another LED and that would win. Yeah. So I think we're supposed to imprint the transmute. Alright, so Phil is probably going what transmute artifact at this moment? <laughs> All right, come on, Ponder. I need you to be good to me. Give me Lion's Eye Diamond. We could go on by cracking this LED for black, but... That would give us Dark Rituals and out, too. Do you want to do that? Eh, I think we can do things next turn, even if we whiff. Are you sure? I mean, I'm willing to crack LED here. I would not crack LED in the finals of a GP, but maybe in a league for, for, the, for the fans. All right, so I'm going to just let it resolve and then be really disappointed when we look at dark ritual all right not dark ritual let's shuffle okay alex is super wise <laughs> we do have a citadel next turn for what it's worth mm -hmm. our life total who knows uh, what we'll be at but it's on the table i also imagine that phil's deck plays the card lightning bolt uh what <laughs> sure all right he's probably gonna fetch up mountain here especially for wild nakadal so yeah so we we're taking a lot uh we already mm -hmm. used the echo so we're kind of priced into playing citadel here which is sort of unfortunate yeah are we just dead or dead for berserk <laughs> that's a bummer yeah all right, uh, I think we want these endings. Let's get the grids out of here and then the chance. Do Is it a mind break deck? deck? I have no idea. Uh, no, it can't be because of Jengatha. It's only permanence they can have, basically. All right, I guess it's probably pretty flurry to play Mentor. Let's do it. All right, maybe we won't have to mulligan to five. Oh, you mean four? Yeah, four. That's what I meant. I mean, we had some fight in us there. Uh, but I got my answer on if it was a Berserk deck or not. Yeah. As a child that played a lot of early Legacy, there was plenty of Berserk decks that were actual just like aggro decks. Uh, I was not... In my area, there was uh, someone who specialized in Giant Growth Berserk decks. Not even like Invigorate, actual Giant Growth. They had uh, Beta Berserks that were just beat to crap. I think we have to do the thing once so that Phil can uh, get get our deck right in, in in his video. Yeah, I mean, Phil recently called Ant Tes, so I'm not even sure if Transmute Artifact threw him off. So I definitely don't want him. I don't want him listing this as Tes. That's all I'm trying to say. Mm -hmm. Reveal Gigantha. So I think That's we keep this. We just play turn one Wishclaw and then turn two win. Um. One, two, three, four, five. Or one six, short. Seven. Yeah, or one short. I mean, we could go turn one Grim Monolith too. But Is that there's not going to be anything that matters. Claw? It doesn't matter because of Gigantha. Like, playing both of these on turn one is the same. Yeah. So Grim Monolith gives us three mana next turn. Uh, just because. Uh, so if we play Grim. I think playing Grim is like slightly better. It's the same. Like, it doesn't actually matter. Um, I guess the downside is getting wasted. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, if we get wasted here, it's going to suck. I think this would have been a spot where getting the scrub line would have made a lot of sense. Yeah, I guess that's fair. But uh, you can't do that with Misty Rainforest. Just throwing that out there. Oh, right, yeah. My perfect deck building. Mm hmm I've never made a mistake before in my life, and I stand by it. 
Yeah, no no way to uh avoid this. Yeah. I'd like to take this time to blame Alex. You should have known better. You should have warned me about that hole breacher. Uh, all these things. Yep, entirely my fault. Thank you. Brent's been playing perfectly. It's just uh, me, me dragging him down. I appreciate your accountability. <laughs> Savannah <laughs> and the step links. Okay. Okay. So now that, that's we get a to fine do the one white spell. We get to do the Citadel thing. I was uh, very scared of a different spell. A needle shaped spell? No, I was scared of an enchantment. Oh, yeah. That card sucks. Actually, should I remove the cat? It's like kind of free in case we fizzle. Yeah. Yeah. Like the mana um doesn't really matter that much once we have the citadel in play. Yeah. Okay, so let's go get <laughs> citadel. Cast it. I was expecting it to go into play, and my heart skipped a second there. <laughs> well, there's the reservoir. Um, yeah, so here we can end any permanent, and it won't actually exile it. Okay. Now we can, now we can... sack the Grim Monolith to go get Wish Claw. Mm -hmm. Brainstorm. Okay. And that's just going to be GG's. Take that, Phil, if that is your real name. Uh, how many uh, winning intriggers do we want to put on the sack at the same time? Well, that's the question. Uh, we'll find out. Phil's just letting me go, so I appreciate Phil. <laughs> this is where Phil uses his... Uh staying silent editing auto editing technique to edit all this out of the video and just says ah, i guess i lost <laughs> i feel better now i'm trying to see how much life we can gain here <laughs> i really appreciate uh, that right now reservoir plus citadel is a really neat combo of like just going really really far together yeah uh let's put the land back transmute let's get rid of this chrome mox Go get Lion's Eye Diamond. Monastery Mentor, where did that come from? If only we had a way to untap our uh, untap our Volus Citadel. True. All right, let's put these back. All right, so I'm fine with winning now. Let's hold priority and uh, let's target Phil a few times. Just a few. <laughs> all right <laughs> casual 300 damage no big deal Whew. all right for all the marbles game number three so alex i mentioned this to alex before we started recording i switched my desk around today and i raised my chair and i just keep on hitting my knee on the desk now so I might have to go back to lowering my chair. It's supposed to be better for my posture to have it higher up, but I don't know. Keep on Sounds hitting like the you desk. need to raise your desk then. Yeah, maybe I should just be standing the entire time. Yeah, standing desks are wonderful. Desks are wonderful. I have one of those. I use it some like that sometimes. It's great. I think we're going to keep this. It's not that explosive, but I think it's fine. Yeah, it does the thing. We have Island, Brainstorm, and Fetchland, so... This is one of those hands, Alex, where I would love to draw the one of off the top. Talking about Blossom Citadel, not Echo of Aeons. Mm -hmm. So we want to play Misty to get Underground Sea because the Delta cannot get Scrubland. So let's uh, remember that. Misty. Taiga. The Hellhound. So it's raining cats and dogs. Oh my god, we hit it. We have turn two Citadel. Um, is, so, is there any reason not to cast Brainstorm right now? Well, we want to do it on their end step so they can't waste us. That's a good point. Okay. I think we're going to take a little bit of damage here. We will. 
Yep. So this is going to deal eight. We're going to lose half our life before we even get the Citadel into play. And if it was Berserk, yikes. Yeah. Interesting. Okay, there's the fetch. So crop rotation into Berserk would be lethal. Honestly, crop rotation would get us really low too. Oh, there it is. <gasps> why, why do I open up my mouth? Oh, we're getting turn two. Basically, uh, I mean, I guess we, we did just dunk two. on Phil, so like, I'm not gonna be. Yeah, this is, this is fair play. Yeah. Was that so, 16? Yep, so this Citadel's likely shut off now. Um, At least Phil didn't get a uh, a red source to have Lightning Bolt up. That would have been rather unfortunate. Yeah, but... sort of a bummer about the Citadel, though. Should have been yeah. faster. I, I think that brainstorming on turn 1 to try to turn 1 this Citadel would have been neat, but... Um, um, I mean, technically that would have done it. Yeah. I mean, just Should put we... away this Citadel and something else. I mean, right? we could play Citadel, Citadel right now. Uh, and then we have two zeros to start off. We could. Um... We could also shuffle away the Citadel and try to look for Wishclaw into Echo. Yeah. With uh, two brainstorms. So we want to. Do we want to fetch first? I think so, yeah. If we do that, it's the same as. Um... One brainstorm because then the next one only looks at one card. That's fair. I think we should cast one of these. Okay. So transmute gets wish claw. Um, uh, yeah. So let's put back brainstorm. And we can go get Alex's favorite land with this scrub land. That was not a dig at Alex. That was Alex just loving Scrubland. So don't yeah, try to make it as much more fun. Well, I said it was your favorite land. Don't, you know, like lie to the fans. <laughs> I didn't think it was going to happen this league, but we are transmuting for Wishclaw, which is going to be lethal. Yeah, and then we just find tendrils. Yeah. Who's getting turn two to fail? <laughs> Played it perfectly. Get out of here, cats and dogs. Take your pets and go home. So we 2 3 this league. One of those losses was my fault, so this should have been a 3-2. Um, but, Alex, any Report feedback... Says two, three. Any feedback uh, on this deck list for Andre? Yeah, so I think the mana needs to be redone, like, a lot. Uh, I think I said it during the league, but Basic Island is not it. The Fetchlands... Missy should definitely be uh, Flooded Strands. Um... I think the sideboard is the the force of wills were fine in the combo mirror, uh, and this deck is like a couple of ticks slower than the epic storm just because you need that extra mana to put citadel into play, um, and you have fewer options to go fast with like an empty the warrens or a fast echo. Uh, we died to hate permanence a lot, like four prismatic endings just were not enough. Um, maybe seeing things like a massacre. Or a more well-rounded sideboard instead of all these forces. Um, it, it's possible that like abrupt decay is just too necessary as a combo deck to remove meddling mages and ethos one canonists stuff like that. Yeah, uh, definitely could use a lot of work on the sideboard. I thought the main deck actually worked better than I would have expected. If I'm being honest, like, oh yeah, transmute was a lot better than I thought it was going in. Like I was pretty impressed by that. Uh, the Scrubland did bite us in one spot, but that was my own fault. Uh, but I agree with you for the most part. I think the sideboard was the weakest aspect of this deck. Yeah, game ones I felt pretty confident in what we were doing. Uh, Transmute for Aetherflux Reservoir felt very powerful, um, especially when you're transmuting off of the Citadel, uh, yeah. just as something you could do. And then like uh, once you have Reservoir and Citadel in play, that just like plays together very, very nicely. Uh, and it didn't feel like we ran into the problem where we just like played Citadel and had to land on top, though I'm sure that that's something that happens uh, a good percentage of the time. Well, there's only 12 lands for what it's worth. Uh, not that many. There's actually one less than the Epic Storm. Yeah, I don't know. Every time I've 
played Citadel and Vintage, I've immediately seen Polluted Delta on top of my deck, so. <laughs> <laughs> so I think the biggest weakness of this deck is Grafter's Cage, because both your engines get shut down by it, both Echo and Blossom Citadel, so that was a big issue. Yeah, it's possible that putting something like a Peer into the Abyss for this deck is, like, something that's reasonable. Uh, yeah. I don't know. I'm not sure. Uh, so I don't know if you need both Reservoir and Tendrils is another thing, but we did use both very differently throughout this league. So maybe you do want both. Uh, like, for example, think... we finished the game off with a Reservoir where, or I'm sorry, the match off with uh, Tendrils where Reservoir wouldn't have gotten the job done. So. Yeah, I think if you're playing Echo, you have to play the Tendrils because uh, Echo and Tendrils play much better together, but uh, Citadel and Reservoir play well together. Mm -hmm. So. That's unclear to me. Uh, again, yeah, Transmute Artifact was very good. I think that like seeing some sort of like sideboard things, like like I said, the portable hole would be really cool to see out of the sideboard so you could transmute for it. Yeah, uh, like that should definitely be in there. Yeah. Um, Brian, oh, Brian, three years for endings. a second. I didn't hate the ending, so uh, I think it probably wants to be a split. I think you probably want some endings, some holes, some decays. Yeah. Uh, Brian can cover his ears for a minute where we could talk about uh, a Karn. Karn could be interesting in this style of deck. Um, all right, that's all we had for this video. Uh, thank you for tuning in. <laughs> Don't play Karn, ever. Not on this channel. Mm -hmm. We do not accept Karn <laughs> decks. Karn is forbidden. <laughs> uh, I, I never say anything about Karn the Great Creator. And this will be the last video we ever have Alex in. Yep, I'm fired. See you, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> all right, we're just, you know, spinning our wheels at this point. Andre, thank you for the donation deck. Hopefully you all enjoyed watching this video. Alex, thank you for joining me. Uh, it was a blast having you here. I appreciate you uh, taking some of the heat for my misplays. Uh, you know, it's very kind of you. Uh, do you have any final words? Uh, uh, deck is interesting. Um, it might be fun to tinker around with more, but yeah. I see what you did there, Tinker. Alex, where can the fans find you? Uh, you can find me uh, in the, the Discord. You can find me at, on Twitter at Vivaris underscore. Uh, sometimes I stream on Twitch at Vivaris. Yeah, those are the best places to find me. Okay, cool. Well, uh, take care. Keep storming. Have a great day. See ya. Hey, Brian Cook here. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like and subscribe, but also follow the social media channels down below. If you want to support this content directly, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com shop. And if you need a little bit of assistance with the Epic Storm to get to that next level, I would recommend going to theepicstorm.com tutoring. Don't worry, there's more great content coming right up.